Um, good afternoon. So, um, yeah, indeed, within this uh, project BioClean, uh, I want to give a presentation on intensified bioremediation of plastic waste in composting and other surface disposal systems. So, yeah, our company, I always skip. Uh, terrestrial biodegradation, uh, so that means following environments. So, we have composting, we have soil, anaerobic digestion, and landfill. So, uh, not the aquatic system, you have the freshwater and the marine, but that is not included. Uh, okay, it has already been mentioned in the previous presentation. So, in fact, there are two uh, processes which are looked at. So, that is bioremediation. Uh, so, these are more like new processes to treat, um, to treat plastics uh, more like ex situ. And then uh, bio-augmentation, which is in existing situations and in existing processes where to try, we try to improve the biodegradation, so that is more related to in situ. So you also have to make the distinction between in situ and ex situ uh, biodegradation. Um, yeah, again, I've shown this this morning, so you have different environmental fields. So we are looking in solid waste, we are looking um, the terrestrial processes, we are looking to composting, soil, biogasification, landfill, uh, and, and um, since we are looking to biodegradation, I think uh, once more it is important to make the distinction between disintegration and biodegradation because still these terms are very often confused and I think it is really important that we cannot be happy when we only have disintegration or fragmentation. This is just a kind of first step. You don't see the product anymore, but it's maybe out of sight, but certainly not out of mind. So we really need to go to the complete biodegradation. This is the conversion uh, to carbon dioxide and water. And this is, uh, okay, a synonym is mineralization because you are, of course, uh, converting organic material back to the original mineral building blocks, which are CO2 and water, or in the case of anaerobic digestion, also methane. And this is a kind of chain process, and we really need to go to the end. So biodegradation is really checking the complete end, and therefore, if we look to molecular weight loss, uh, if we look to ATP, ADP activity, if we look to bioresistant methods, like, for example, fungal growth or so, they are just a they are measuring secondary effects. Uh, this is a sign of biological activity, but this, this cannot be replacing true biodegradation, true measurement of carbon dioxide uh, and methane production. So these are the formulas. This is like basic chemistry, but still I think it is important. So in case of aerobic biodegradation, you have conversion of carbon in the polymer to carbon dioxide and water, residual carbon, which is in fact undegraded sample, and then carbon in the biomass, while in anaerobic biodegradation, you have uh, methane and carbon dioxide. So these are the essentials which I think are important because otherwise we are not looking to biodegradation, but we are looking to secondary effects and not true biodegradation. Okay, so this is uh, how we measure it. Uh, we measure the carbon dioxide production. Of course, we have a blank which is producing uh, carbon dioxide from the inoculum. This is the background activity. The sample is producing more carbon dioxide and from the difference we can calculate the percentage of biodegradation. So in uh, this project, uh, we are going to, uh, with regard to composting, we are mainly going to focus on two methods. So one is ISO 14855, is a controlled composting test method to measure the conversion of carbon to carbon dioxide. Um, and these are then the things with which we maybe can play, we can do some exercises, because normally this test is run with mature compost as an inoculum in order to have a high signal to background uh, ratio. But we're, by working with mature compost, we are of course deviating from reality because in reality you are working with fresh waste and maybe this can have an impact. We know for some polymers, this is an important factor. So this is maybe one of the parameters uh, with which we can improve the biodegradation. Uh, this is something uh, to see. Another option is to work with an artificial matrix. Uh, which is then vermiculite, uh, which is like a kind of clay mineral with very similar characteristics as compost, but like that you can better control uh, the biology which you are adding and you don't have so much effect from indi indi indigenous uh, microorganisms. Uh, of course, we run the test at high temperature because we are simulating industrial composting. And what is also typical to this test, um, and that will again be a challenge uh, in this project also, uh, through biodegradation, remember the formula, you also have biomass formation, uh, and that is difficult to measure. So the biomass you cannot really determine, you cannot quantify. 
But the benefit in this test is that the biomass in turn will also respire and will be converted to carbon dioxide. So that is an advantage of a composting test and also of a soil test. The biomass itself is again converted to carbon dioxide. So this is something which will be included in the evaluation of the biodegradation. We will also use a pilot scale composting test. So this is uh, based on ISO 6929, which is an official standard method, which is normally designed <coughs> to check the disintegration, uh, starting with fresh bio waste. So in contrast with the previous test, we work with fresh bio waste instead of mature compost. Um, now, in this test, we can, in, in this project, uh, the intention is to see whether it can be used for cultivation of this is a term invented uh, by some Americans, plastophilic microorganisms. So those are microorganisms which would love to degrade plast plastic. I want to see if they exist, uh, but okay, we have already a name at least. Um, so, but maybe in these, in these uh, composting, in these pilot scale composting vessels, we can, that is the bio-augmentation, we can cultivate them and grow them um, yeah, in, in, in a controlled way. So this, of course, will, uh, we will need to, to check the operating conditions. Uh, maybe we will need to modify some operating conditions. Um, and that can then be used both for bioremediation, so maybe we can develop new processes where the plastics can be uh, treated uh, on purpose and, and in separate systems, or they can be used to cultivate microorganisms, which can then be used to bio-augment in natural uh, situations. Um, also, the soil biodegradation test is going to be run. Um, so again, for measuring carbon to carbon dioxide, uh, some ways here are to work with the soil or to work with a mixture of different soils, which is why we, we strongly advocate the use of different soils because that will improve the results. Or an alternative option, which was uh, added in a recent edition of this ISO method, is the use of artificial soil. Um, and we have seen some preliminary results which are quite promising uh, because apparently you have less competition because if you are cultivating special microorganisms, um, we have seen this a couple of times, in the laboratory it works very well, but as soon as there is some competition with other microorganisms, they lose the battle and they disappear. So the, I think one of the challenges, and especially in this project that will be needed, is how can we control uh, the competition from ind indigenous uh, microorganisms, how can we make sure that, let's say, the manipulated microorganisms have a chance to survive and to do their job as we wish them to do it. And therefore, the use of artificial soil, at least in a test, uh, is promising. Then we will need to think how can we link that to real application methods, because, of course, in, in reality, uh, it will be, be, be but a true soil. Operating conditions will need to be changed. And again, here in the, in the soil tests, uh, we have again the benefit that the biomass which is formed is itself respired, so you can really go to 100% uh, conversion. Then also we will do anaerobic tests. So uh, this will be based on ISO 15985, uh, which is a high solids anaerobic biodegradation test, so measuring conversion to methane and carbon dioxide. Representative, uh, representative for anaerobic digestion, but can also be used to have uh, first ideas on biodegradation in landfill, because obviously in landfill biodegradation is going very, very, very slowly, uh, and you, you would need uh, several uh, generations of uh, scientists to see the results. So uh, you have to accelerate, uh, so, and this is a test by which you can uh, uh, accelerate the biodegradation, which is taking place in a landfill, so it's a good uh, simulation. Obviously, no oxygen. What we have in anaerobic digestion is stable biomass formation. So that is then a difference. The carbon which is converted to, uh, to biomass is kind of locked in the biomass and it's much more difficult to be released again to uh, methane or carbon dioxide. So this is the setup, okay, yeah, very simple. So we have the reactor and we collect the biogas in volumetric measuring systems. Here we see the reactors, very controlled in an oven. So um, what are some challenges uh, we see uh, with regard to, to these test uh, procedures? So the microbial population, uh, how can we make sure that we have the good microbial population? Microbial diversity, so um, this, is, this is a bit a question because normally uh, a, 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 healthy, my, a healthy biological system is uh, characterized by biodiversity, it must be as biodiverse as possible. The more species you have, the more healthy, the, more, uh, the better is your environment. 
Maybe in this case, we want to work with, with special microorganisms, so we have to go the opposite direction. So this will be a very interesting um, challenge. How are we going to deal with microbial diversity? We will certainly need to stimulate <coughs> fungal activity. And as mentioned before, in, in water, it is, it is not easy to develop fungal activity, so this will be a challenge. And then, as mentioned already, uh, how are we going to make sure that non-indigenous microorganisms can exert the activity which we want them to exert? Of course, uh, we are also need to deal with very slow and very low biodegradation, so this is also a challenge. It has been mentioned already a couple of times, uh, how are we going to, to deal with that? Uh, and then make sure that we can make the, also the distinction between my primary and secondary biodegradation uh, effects and also the repeatability, so uh, quite some challenges. And then as uh, already shown this morning, uh, so you have the decrease of molecular weight, where is it bottoming out? Here we have the influence of temperature, but I guess also there is an influence of, of, uh, of light, the light intensity. So I think it is also very interesting um, when checking decrease in molecular weight, how far is it going, uh, and what is the impact of some parameters, because I think there is uh, more work needed in this context as well. And then uh, see if we can reach, let's say, uh, threshold values under which biodegradation is possible, um, and how we reach that. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you.